Welcome to Business Influencers, part of the Tell Radio Network. We hope everyone had a great, happy new year. It is 2023. May this be your best year yet. Again, if you're new to Business Influencers, you found us here at Tell Radio, part of the Touch of Life Foundation. We highly encourage you to check out some of the other shows that Tell Radio has been introducing across many different topics and levels of interest for people, whether if it's business, lifestyle, wellness, all of the above, check them out at tellradio.org. We are excited to let you know that Tell Radio uh, with business influencers now, we continue to keep growing because of you, the listener, each and every week sharing this show with others and allowing us to help our, get our subject matter experts share their knowledge and insights to help move you personally and your business to the next level. Today's show is being brought to you today by Alumni Direct. Alumni Direct is a new social media community platform dedicated to bringing alumni together from all different generational types. This is a membership site, meaning that it takes all the noise out of social media. So you're paying for less noise and the opportunities to generate genuine, authentic relationships with people from all different generational types. They also have a new Athletes Corner where professional athletes that are transitioning to everyday life have an opportunity to meet and be able to engage each other to make that transi transition smoothly than they would have done without it. Check them out at alumnidirect.com. That's alumnidirect.com. Well, we got a great show for you today. We are going to be talking about eventing happiness. What is your metric? And we are here with Dr. Gordon Chu. And Dr. Gordon Chu, before I introduce him, I'm going to give you a little information about him because he has an extraordinary information to sh share with you about happiness today. I've had the privilege of hearing him talk uh, recently for a Stanford story telling group, and it was phenomenal. He is a husband of an amazing wife and father of two girls, ages six and seven. He is an author, a futurist, innovator, an investor in health, wellness, science, education, positive music, business strategy, and motivation with global reach. His education platform can be found at dwaprep.com. He gave his first TED Talk in 2014 in the field of graphene and his second TED Talk in inventing happiness. Dr. Gordon Chu is interested in technology, science, and cutting-edge knowledge to create breakthrough changes. His experiences range from former research scientists at Pfizer and Merck and Company to solid business links with Wall Street and Asia. Dr. Chu has firsthand research experience in dealing with H1N1 and influenza in 2009 and was featured in the documentary uh, Germs, the Invisible Enemy. He has received over 40 granted domestic and international patents across a wide array of of scientific applications. And I could keep going on and on and on, especially with his, his uh, level of education and background, but I'll let him talk about that here during the show. And without further ado, we welcome Dr. Gordon Chu to the show. Dr. Chu, how are you doing today? Christopher, I'm doing great. How many people wished you and you were wishing others happy new year, right? Happy new year. Quite a few. <laughs> right, and, and, and then you have your happy birthday, right? Um, so happiness is constantly being used, constantly yeah. being used. And, and, and do we know what it means when someone wishes you happy happiness, right? What, what is your happiness? And that's where this article that went out to India, you know, India is a very interesting country because this coming year is when it eclipses the, um, you know, to be the most populous more over China. And uh, there's articles and write-ups and predictions about this, you know, it's not there yet, but given the momentum, this is where we'll be going. So how much uh, business are you doing in India? Uh, the opportunity to write the article uh, came from a classmate and peer uh, over at Harvard. And, um, and the, the, it, it, it made me think that they said you can write about anything. Just like you said, I could talk about anything. And, and, I, and, I, and I sat there in the end of 2022 and I said, let me tie this back into the second TED Talk, which was inventing my happiness. That was inventing my happiness. Now, if I put my in the title, uh, the title just had inventing happiness. 
Um, most people wouldn't come listen to it because they said, well, I don't need to know about your happiness. I need to know about mine. Right. And I said, well, let me start off with my happiness because I haven't figured it out. I have no idea what I'm doing. That was the, the, the theme of the talk. The first talk was about graphene. I knew what I was doing. Um, and I realized that by becoming a father, I had never was a father before. And the second time of being a father, I realized that I really didn't have any experience. Yeah. And I and I had the the desire to 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 learn more about it. But what was strange was I didn't have quite the level of fear and concerns as I did when I became a husband. Mm. I didn't have any experience being a husband. Imagine if I told my wife, you know, I have experience being a husband. I'll be a great one because my I have great experience. Right. Imagine that. Right. That wouldn't go over so well. Right. Or imagine this. When, when yeah, you might have overpromised and underdelivered, right? <laughs> well, then the questions were like, "Why are you not a husband anymore?" <laughs> right? You know, what <laughs> happened, right, in the prior relationship, right? So sometimes, not having any experience is the right answer, right? You know, because it could only be problematic, and oftentimes you'd point the finger and say, "Oh, it was completely the other side's fault. I'm perfect," right? You can no longer say that. At least you can say, if you've never been married before, I am unknown. Right? I don't, <laughs> I'm not unknown, but I'm not, right? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not divorced. But 50% of people, um, relationships, they say, get divorced. All right. So if you're going to write about, you know, divorce, you capture all the people who have been divorced, right? So pick something that matters to them, it's relevant to them. And you capture all the people who don't want to become divorced, right? And and part of it is what what's the reason? You know, so so you look at the statistic and you say, what is the reason that you got divorced? And and many people would say, oh, it must have been financial, right? It must have been financial. Do you know what the main reason is? If you had to guess, yeah, if you could share, what would that be? Um, it's not financial though. <laughs> so, uh, but, but I mean, the happiness, I would say it, 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 it's always, I would say for me, what I've learned and I've had success and monetarily, but for me, it was really getting to know who I really was and choosing to love myself. So that relationship with myself, not from a narcissistic point of view, but somebody that I could love myself unconditionally and then value my relationships even more with other people, my family, friends, and even people I do business with. That to me was the happiness that I, cho I chose it. Like I had to choose it to become it. Mm. And what happens if the other side doesn't choose it? All right. It, it, at this point in my life, it doesn't matter. As long as uh, that I love myself, it doesn't matter what others think. So, I used to think that way too. I said it doesn't matter what others think. And then and then I tried it on the stock market, right? And I, <laughs> I, right? It's going up, right? I, I'm gonna be bullish, right? And because I believe in the future, right? I'm a futurist, so I can see the future is bright, but tomorrow is dark. <laughs> and then there you go, right? And then and then down we go we go down the chute, right? How about this? Interest rates, right? I believe long-term interest rates because of, you know, population and other constraints, we're going lower. But it doesn't matter if the next 10 years are higher, right? Next five years are higher. Anything higher could totally change your game. And it doesn't take long to, to basically deplete you of your gas. You know, you, you might, you know, under, under extreme conditions, we, we might not last as long. So it does matter what others think, depending on what they're going to do. If they do nothing, right? And you, you could think on all your own, then then fine, right? You have all the time in the world, but if they do something, and we're talking about divorce. So so here's the main reason why people get divorced, right? It's infidelity. Yeah, it's infidelity. But do you know in business, we deal with infidelity all the time? Yeah. Um, in business, your customers go to someone else. Go to someone else happens all the time. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, or, you know, let's not point the finger at the customers. Or you acquired a business where um, the business is actually being like the 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 market share that others have. They're actually trying to get rid of it. So so while you're looking at your books and saying, "Oh, this is great." They're getting rid of it because it's not going to be around after three years. <laughs> so, so the first three years, you're seeing, oh wow, look at this uptick, right? And I'm speaking of a medium-sized or a bigger company acquiring um, something and telling their investors, this is really good. And then, and then, bam, right? Let me give you an example. Um, let's say it was uh, VHS, right? VHS, and we're 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 kind of you know these. These these recording tapes, right? Um, and uh, and we're we're moving to DVDs. Wow, could you imagine buying that business and saying, "Look, my market share is now." That's obvious, so everybody sees it, right? Anybody who plays any music can see it. It could happen in the vinyl records. It could happen in any transition, right? And then and then suddenly it's gone. So you know the title for something like this would be. Blue ocean versus red ocean. Okay, so red ocean is where there's lots of competition and it's losing. But imagine where the blue ocean turns red. Mm. Right, it turns red, right? And and there's 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 friction. Or the blue ocean, like whatever bait you had catching the fish, no longer works because it's all fished out of the fish you were looking for. There's other fish, but you just have the wrong fish. Right. So, so why, why I mention about life change is because it's the change that becomes challenging for us, where we do have to look at not how others respond, but more importantly, is the setup is who did we put on that team in order to respond? So, let's use an example we're climbing Mount Everest together, you, you and I, Christopher. And, um, and you know, uh, it's just us. And instead of having an interview like this, um, where um, we, we don't like each other, we don't like each other anymore. So, um, so the six thousand calories that we need to survive, we're, we're, I'm not cooking, or you're not cooking. So we have to cook on our own. So all day long now you're cooking, right? Making sure you have the six thousand calories. So, so, um, so do you share any of your food? Because if you don't. Or if, do I share any of my food? Because if I don't, tomorrow I'm cooking alone again, <laughs> right? You know, <laughs> and, and and good luck climbing Mount Everest because that was the goal, right? So you end up not achieving your goal. Yeah. We're going to have, right? We're going to have some serious friction. And I highlight that in the article is that somehow, some way, somewhere, we decided in most developed countries to not replace ourselves in the people who do have children, right? We have fewer than two, right? We don't replace ourselves and our spouse. We might have one. And if you average in all the, all the numbers, the United States is at 1.6. China is at 1.7. So while India has not eclipsed China yet, the... The, the, the numbers in India is greater than 2.0 on birth rates. And so eventually we wonder, where are we going? Now, we can live in the now. They say that if you want to be happy, just live in the moment. Does that also mean let's not think about global climate change? Didn't you have a warm winter? Yeah, it was slightly cold right actually it was in terribly cold for a few days and then it became like yeah yeah i remember that right week before christmas <laughs> right right you know so some people had a white christmas um but you know there's a song out there have you heard i mean this is already past the time but um but blue christmas was something that elvis had right blue christmas what a great song right because Blue Christmas is not white Christmas. So, you know, white Christmas, I'm dreaming of a white Christmas, you know, but blue Christmas begins with, I'll have a blue Christmas without you. It just starts off. 
And you know, amongst the, uh, if you compared blue versus white Christmas, blue actually does better than white Christmas in sales. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I will have a blue Christmas without you, right? And then it even talks about white Christmas inside the blue Christmas. It says like, with your Christmas of white, all right, you'll be doing all right. You'll be doing all right with your Christmas of right, but but I'll have a blue, 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 blue Christmas. And that's those are the lyrics. And so you wonder, right, in life, do we need and do we go further by thinking about ourselves only? Or do we go further by having teams work together, right? The key is working together and not forcibly. So in, in building a family, I started thinking, I really don't know what I'm about to experience. What team members am I getting? See, if you're building a company, you got to choose the teams, right? You choose, or you're building a, a um, you know, a softball team. You choose the best people based on their skills, right? Their skills. But what if you had to choose people based on their aspirations? Let me change the game on us. Do you remember when we were, um, I'm going to bring us back to a, a period for the listeners, high school. That was not good because somebody was going to be number one, right? In college, you know, someone is always number one, but you, you get to, you get used to it, right? But in high school or middle school, middle school and grammar school, they're not so much into that, but high school is like, Who's number one? Who's the valedictorian? It probably gets more advertised like Blue Christmas than White Christmas. Like who is valedictorian? You know who's going to be in trouble? Like like a lot of like deep emotional trouble, not with anybody else, but with themselves is the salutatorian, the one in second, not the one who's fifth or 25th or, or 100th, right? That doesn't, not so bad, but if you're second and you were, if your GPA was 0.01, from the first, oh, that's got to eat you up, right? And all the things we could have done if we were. Thankfully, when you get to college, it's like, all right, as long as I go to this school, I'll be okay, all right? As long as I get into here, I'll be all right. But the reality is, is it all right? Was it all right? So you mentioned I had a lot of degrees and lots of education, let's put it that way, is I have tried so many times to get myself into the mindset of teams. But back then I didn't know I was doing it. So I had to try more times, right? It's almost like, you know, in contrast, the book I have that you haven't read yet, because I am in trying to not write multiple books to justify that first book that I made got you to read that I just didn't really want to write. And I tried, I created this product and now I don't like the products. So I have to come up with 10 more products, right? Try not to do that because in the degree side, I have done that so many times, so many times. One time was in medicine. Yeah. Medicine. And then, and then I started learning that, wait a minute, there's another type of medicine. There's a, now, other than the, than the traditional conventional medicine, there's Chinese medicine. Why is there Chinese medicine? And what's wrong with Chinese medicine? And then I realized it's the name. It says Chinese. It's, that means it's not for everybody. So a lot of people don't believe it, except unless you're Chinese, you believe yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> right? What would happen if I we did an interview and I was like dry and boring, right? Well, you know, it would be, um, would, 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 then, then I wouldn't have such a good time, <laughs> right? You would <laughs> have such a good time. I'm just doing this so that we have a good time, right? Yeah. Yeah. So inventing happens. What is your metric? Um, the, the key is that if you live on someone else's metric, and I brought up Elvis, do you know how many Elvis impersonators? that there are there's many many too many to count <laughs> right and how many christopher salem's or dr gordon chu impersonators are there right you know as we climb up the mountain right you know if it's successful there'll certainly be some impersonators right but i my advice today is to don't impersonate because look what happened to the elvis impersonators right we, we do we know them by name right we don't right we know that 
We know them by their shadows. They're Elvis impersonators. That's it. Right? You go look and, and then you compare who was the better impersonator. And then you find the best one. I'm sure there's the top 10. And you still don't know who their names are. Right? And you don't go checking on them every now and then. The people who are listening in the future to this show, I want you to remember that in order to make life meaningful, you've got to make it your own. It's got to be your own. That is the most important thing, is that without life being meaningful to you, who's looking, right? Yeah, so what is your metric? Does What if today's happiness doesn't meet yesterday's expectations? That's a problem. Are you living your metric or someone else's metric? But if you find your perfect metric, this actually can allow you to live a quality of life earlier. We don't know our quantity, but I know from looking at the data, because that is one of my other educational uh, stints, right? To look at data. I didn't look at data just to analyze the data. A lot of people do that. I looked at data so that I could change the future outcome by changing our mindset with the existing data. Look at the trends of all these people who are in developed countries. Developed countries allow you to live a better life than an underdeveloped country, right? That's what we understand. Then why are we having fewer children? Our children, then let's look at the correlation. Are children bad? Are they bad for happiness? Or are children good for happiness? And... One article and one study says it depends if you can afford to have the children. And affordability isn't just financial. Could you imagine having children and then you're working on something and thinking of something and they're really young and they're talking about things and you scream at them saying, you know, stop, right? You're, you're affecting what I'm doing. But you brought, the, they didn't ask to be born. They're here because we brought them in. So over time, as you read more Blue Ocean and Red Ocean books, as you read more things about parenting and, 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 and having children, as we develop more of our mindset, we have the result. Most people decided to have fewer children in developed countries. That's how we got to 1.6 in this country. Yeah. Now, Russia, right? Russia and Ukraine have a war. Do you think that they would have a war because they're above 2.0? They actually are below 2.0. They're even mm -hmm. below the United States in birth rate. So that's my advice, is that to build our happiness vessel, to build it in a timeless manner, the work you're doing, the projects you're doing, the entrepreneurship you're doing, do it so that you're not going to go and cancel and have to start over. Do it like it's your last. Yeah. Treat others so that they, if they, if you ever have a team, they will want to be with you. Don't travel to the ends of the world for somebody. Travel to the end of the world with somebody. Do it with that mindset and and I promise you, even the narcissist has someone who loves them. They're not a narcissist to everybody, right? Yeah. Maybe just to somebody. And if it starts, right, with the ones that you're going to be loving, maybe it grows, right? Maybe it grows by thinking of these patterns. Yeah. And so I leave you with three final quotes from the article. One is, you must be the change you wish to see in the world. That was Mahatma Gandhi. But didn't this talk just change how you're thinking about it, right? And the second one is Bruce Lee. The key to immortality is first living a life worth remembering. How to do that, right? Do it by yourself. You might not really remember yourself because you'll be gone. So the third is alone we can do so little. Together we can do so much. That's by Helen Keller, right? So three 
experts from different segments have mentioned this. And then I'm not an expert, so I'm going to mention to you mine, is to focus on working on your obituary. While it doesn't look like your resume and it might not get you your job, it will help you more than your resume to be remembered by the people you leave behind. Wow. Powerful, Dr. Chu. I, 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 I love what you said. It, it gives a whole new perspective, like just on a bigger level of, you know, you know, inventing happiness. And I know you could expand even more on this. And and I, I know with another show that I have, we're going to be talking more in length about that. Yeah. So I want to let the listeners know that are listening now and then also will be listening later. How can they get to know you better? Where is the best place they could reach you? And, and find out more about your work in this area? Um, my work, uh, some of it is relating to children, uh, especially my own, as well as the others that, uh, that follow me. Uh, DWAprep.com is a platform that I've built. Um, they could watch the TED Talk, Inventing Happiness, the second one, and contrast the, the TED Talk with the other TED Talk. And the first TED Talk was about graphene. And you can see that only about 8,000 people um, viewed it uh, since 2014. But the Inventing Happiness, a lot more views, um, you know, multiples higher, but more meaningful for myself. And they actually talk about the same thing, actually. One is about, you know, you put the wrong word in front and people don't know what it is. They don't understand it. So so I, I want people to, um, when they reach out, them to know my core, I, I want to talk soul to soul. I don't want, you know, periphery on the very top, skim the surface, get to reduce the number of people, you know, and increase the, the, the few that you have and build that relationship. Now, of course, if they're not worth building, then go, go find the ones worth building. But that's, that's the key. Right. And I'll leave you today because we're, we're out of time. Right. Christopher. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. You have shared so much great insight. We highly encourage listeners to get to know Dr. Chu. Reach out to him. Go to his website. Reach out. There's this. We could keep talking on and on. We will definitely have him on a future show to expand on this very important topic, especially with 2023 moving forward. Thank you, Dr. Chu, for taking time out of your busy day to be with us. Thank you, Christopher. Thank you so much, listeners. And we hope 2023 is going to be a banner year from you. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us at chris at christophersalem.com. We are committed to bringing subject matter experts like Dr. Chu in over across a wide variety of different topics to help move you personally and your business to the next level. Till then, everybody, we'll see you next week and have a great day.